probably do that. But without Jesus, none of us would be here this morning. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We come before you this morning, giving praise, giving honor, giving glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because without your name, Jesus, hallelujah, where would any of us be, Lord God? But, Lord God, what our mind is attentive on you this morning. What it is that you are saying to us, Lord God. Your word is saying to us, let him that have an ear hear what the spirit is saying. That you sent, Lord God, your handmaiden into this building today. That we may hear what it is your word is saying to us. So, Lord God, we are tending to your word this morning. We say thank you, Father, hallelujah, for allowing us to be on this side of the earth this morning. But, Lord God, we know that there's families right now that is in bereavement. But, Lord God, because I know that you are no respect of person, you are there with them right now as you are with us. So this morning, Lord God, we just honor your name. We lift your name on high, Lord God, for your word says if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you, Lord God. But there's nothing about what we have done, Lord God. But it's what about you, what you have done within us, Lord. Your new nature, Lord God, that is in us now, Lord God, we come to worship you. We come to praise you. Heavenly Father, we know it's not us, Lord God, but we know that it's about your son, his spirit that lives within us, Lord God. So tonight, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, we just magnify your name. All over this building, Lord God, the buildings next door, the buildings next door, the buildings next door, because we are the church, Lord God. We can go out, Lord God, and make disciples, Lord God, of you. So this morning, Lord God, as we come gathering together in your presence, Lord, we're in your presence, Lord God. Allow our minds, Lord God, to cease, Lord God, for whatever else, Lord God, that comes before us, Lord. Because right now, this very minute, our minds is being renewed right now in your spirit. Our minds is being made new, Lord God, being transformed right now, Lord. We don't have to walk out the way we walked in. Because your spirit, Lord God, has hovering over us, Lord God, as it hovered over that water. So this morning, Lord God, we just give honor to your name. We're so grateful, Lord God, hallelujah, that you are already here, Lord God. When we came into the building, Lord God, you were already here, Lord, because you live in us, Lord God. So when we enter this building, Lord God, you entered it too. Your word says you'd already made way straight for the maiden. All we have to do is walk in it. All we want to do is believe what it is, Lord God, that you have said to us. As your word says, we don't have to climb a mountain. We can speak to that mountain and it will be moved. Whatever it is we need, Lord God, we know that you are in our presence right now. We're at your feet, Lord God. And Lord God, hallelujah, your word says for us to come up hither. So Lord God, you've already pulled up us up on a higher level than what we were when we came in. So we magnify your name, Jesus. We just give praise to your name, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, Lord, we could never, ever praise you enough. What you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do, Lord God. We get so excited in our spirit, Lord God. Our spirit, may our Lord God, wait, wait on you, Lord God. Your word says, those who wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord, we will mount up like an e wings of an eagle. And we just don't get weary and faint. We know, Lord God, that there are so many things that's going on and so many things that's happening. But your word says that we just cast all our cares upon you. So this morning, Lord God, we bring all of our cares upon you. This is a day that you have made, Lord God. And we understand that phrase, Lord God, when we say that this is the day that you have made, Lord God, because you are the chief cornerstone. This day was made for you, Lord God, that we will rejoice and we will be glad that you called us, Lord God. You called us from the deep, Lord God. You adopted us into your family, Lord God. So we are already royalty priesthood, Lord God. We are already wealthy individuals, Lord God. And as we come to you today, Lord God, given honor and glory, Lord God, we know that the word that you've already prepared, Lord God, is going to be fit for us, Lord God. But the season that we are in right now, and we say thank you, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. We give you honor and we give you glory because there is no other name that we can be saved. There is no other name that we can call upon. But when we call upon Jesus, we know you hear us. You answer us and show us great and mighty things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
football stadium. We'll make more noise than that. Make some noise if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to get into our worship service this morning, so we want you to join along. Oh. 
you would just, if you would just break free from whatever you've been facing this week and begin to worship him, you can experience the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Anybody free in the room? Let me see the hands of the free people. Come on, the people who aren't afraid to worship, the people who are unashamed, the people who came in this room to give God a praise. We love your name, Jesus. You're worthy. You're mighty God. You're mighty God. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels.
receive your love, God. We receive your love, God. Does anybody receive his love in the room? In the place of worship, you're free. Free from your bondage, free from your pain. time say hallelujah holy holy God almighty great I am who is worthy who is worthy none beside thee God time say hallelujah holy holy God almighty great I am who is worthy none beside thee God Are great hallelujah does anybody believe that God is great in the room come on he's not just great on Sundays but he's great every single day of the week 24 hours a day hallelujah he is great amen and for that we give him praise hallelujah somebody just give God a big praise in the room hallelujah. come on you can be loud and give God a praise Come on, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? We'd all be lost. We'd be stuck in our sin. But because of his grace and his mercy, we are standing here today and we're able to give God a praise. Come on, we worship your name, oh God. We bless your name. There is nobody like you in all the earth. You are the God who sits high and looks low. You are the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God today hallelujah amen we're gonna do my favorite thing on Sundays let's all stand up for those of you who are not standing let's all stand up and we're gonna share the love of Christ that means if you didn't wake up with someone if you all didn't stay in the same place I want you to go to them and let them know that God loves them hallelujah I'll start I'm gonna give you a hug here what's your name come on give me a hug let's spread the love of Christ this morning Y'all gonna hug each other? Y'all gonna hug somebody? Y'all gonna hug somebody?
right, all right, all right. Now all my adults make some noise. Oh no. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Y'all did y'all hear that? Get it together. Did y'all hear teenagers, that? Teenagers, what are you They doing? were louder than you guys. Let's okay. try it one more time. Cause that was, they beat y'all. All right, kids. Oh my teenagers, come on. Let me hear you make some noise. Woo! Now all my adults make some noise. Now everybody make some noise. Woo! That's how it's supposed to sound. I'm so glad y'all are awake now. Tell your neighbor, stay woke. Stay, stay woke. woke. We have an awesome service plan for our young people. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have an awesome time in the Lord. Amen. 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 God is good all the time. Amen. Are we ready for our young people next? One minute. Oh, okay. He's telling me one minute. I'm, I'm not a good talker. I got a joke. I'm not yeah. a good. She doesn't want me to tell a joke. I'm Don't not. tell that joke. <laughs> I'm not that. Okay, here we go. Here Don't we do it. But Nate, you know what? What? I just realized. What? Everybody wasn't here this week. We weren't here this week. We weren't here this week, so they don't know how much of an awesome time we had at VBS. We did. We had an awesome time. So my kids that were at VBS, did we have a good time? Yeah. Where did we go the last day? <laughs> where Kendall at? <laughs> I still got you, bro. I still got you. No, but seriously, I want to tell all of you parents and leaders, thank you for allowing us to work with your your children and, and the members of your church. Y'all, they were awesome. Yes, they were. They were awesome, and they are so intelligent. Yeah. I was like, I got to go back to elementary school. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I walked in, and I was like, oh, I'm coming to help with VBS. Here we go. I walked in, and I had one baby say, you, you know we come in and we sit down. I said, okay, well, here I go. Let me have a seat. Because she said we sit down. Here we go. Let me have a seat. But, no, we want to thank you so much because you all have some amazing children, have some amazing children, and we had a good time. Didn't we have a good time, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. So I think now, if you're ready... Oh, oh, we're singing another song. You're leading this intentional. He likes to put people on the spot. There you go. Right, right, right. He's intentional, never failing. I know that all things are working for my good. Yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing. Sing that out that all things are working for my good. He's intentional.
for my call. All things are working for my good. Know that all things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. that all things are working for my good. Yeah, 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 yeah. All things are working for my good. I know that all things are working on purpose for a purpose. Yes. Can't get with it.
They're going to do the pledge first or they're going to do superheroes? The pledge first? All right, we're going to do the pledge first. Then we'll line y'all up with your letters, okay? Who remembers the pledge? Oh, so y'all can put your letters down right quick for this. Do the pledge first. <laughs> by God to stand strong, created by God to live for what is right and what is true. We are called by God to help those in need. Now is the time. time. Together, lift your voice to heaven, rise up and pledge. I will have courage. I will have wisdom. I will have hope. I will have power. I am God's hero. Central, ready to go. Hero Central. 
Rose, if you had a letter, get your letter. Get your letter if you had a, who had this one? Just a little bit so when they come through that they can back up just a little bit. All right, we're ready. Peace. Oh, heroes. Let me see. I need to look it up. Okay, they're ready. Can we get all the open arms students to come up, please?
time when we hear a certain call when the world must come together as one there are people dying oh when it's time to lend a hand
just sing along with us. Make some noise for the young people. Amen. 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 God is good. You can bring it on. Amen. Tell your neighbor God is good. I want you to take this time, go to Facebook and share this live feed. Amen. Uh, we're going to be blessed by Jeremiah. He is really a blessing. I enjoyed his company. He has his lovely wife and his mom with us. Y'all come on and clap your hands for the family. And I'm truly elated. I'm truly thankful. Share this because he's really going to bless somebody. Kendall, come stop the fog so we can get the atmosphere clear. Amen. We don't have to young, let the young folks have their moment. And some of you looking at the lights, but some of you parted with the lights. Amen. The Bible said, we are a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they will see the good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Are y'all enjoying yourselves? Yeah. Amen. If we don't impart in the young people now, it's almost too late. The only thing that can save them is Jesus. But if we plant the seeds in their lives now, God would do some things. If we sacrifice our own time, God would do some wonderful. And before he leave our Hispanic pastor, come and greet the people. Come on. Come on. Say hello, Raul. Get a mic, Daniela. Translate. Come on right quick, Raul, our Hispanic pastor. Amen. Amen. Y'all get up for Raul. Amen. Uh, Daniela's not in here. I guess Kenneth's going to translate. Are you going to speak English? Oh. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm speaking English. Thank you very much. And I can speak English. Now you can start it. I'm my son. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's my voice. <laughs> Same like me. He, he can speak Spanish too. And I can speak English. <laughs> Muchas gracias a todos. Yo este, estoy muy agradecido por Dios por la vida de cada uno de ustedes. Uh, I give thanks to uh, all the, uh, God for all your lives. Y por la pasión que, que le ponen en, en, en hacer todo esto para los jóvenes. And all the passion that has been put in for the, the youth. Para usted y para mí es muy difícil ya cambiarnos. For uh, me and y'all, it is really hard to change. Pero las nuevas generaciones están creciendo. The new generations are changing. Y ellos son los que nos van a alimentar cuando nosotros ya seamos mayores adultos. And they are the ones that are going to teach us when we are older. Y, y, y no de comida, sino alimentarnos de, de un espíritu, del espíritu de Cristo. And they will feed us, but not food, but fruits of the spirit. Amen. Amen. Entonces, muchas gracias por sus vidas. Yo doy gracias a Dios por sus vidas. And I thank God for, your, for your lives. Y lo único que nos queda es divertirnos el día de hoy. And all that is left is to have fun today. Amen. Amen. Gracias, Señor. Amen. Y'all give it up for Señor Raúl. Amen. Thank God so much. Come on, Ken. Amen. Stop. This is for those of you that can identify with the music. Listen.
situation into a brighter day. There's no circumstance that I can't come out of when I know Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, I know Jesus. Come on, tell him I know Jesus. The Bible said, let the redeem of the Lord. And if you know you've been brought with the prize, I dare you to give God your best praise right now. There was a young lady that came to the church. Friday night after I took the young people to rock and jump. And she was asking things of the church. And the Bible said, be wise as a serpent. But be humble as a dove. And what she messed up was, she wanted something from us. But what she messed up was, say, even Jesus was a beggar. I said, excuse me. Look at your name. said, Jesus never been a beggar. Oh, y'all ain't saying it. Y'all quiet. I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Jesus, all he had to do was speak to the elements. Tell someone I got to speak to my elements right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing in the room. I got to speak to my elements. And they will obey. 
you're sick, speak to your sickness. The Bible says if you want joy, get up and leap forward. I told him we sang the song that he's a lily in the valley. Lilies don't grow in the valley. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. But even when you're down and out, there ought to be something on the inside of you that will lift you out of the valley and put you on the mountaintop high. That's the God we serve. He's a mighty God. Y'all sit down somewhere. I'm not preaching today. I'm not teaching today. I'm elated for Jeremiah wife and his mom and I just love him ever since I met him he has been nothing but a friend and the Bible said how can you have friends except you show yourself friendly many of us complain about nobody likes me but have you liked somebody else have you shown yourself friendly to somebody else did you say hello to somebody or you walked around with your head down expecting sometimes David said you got to learn to encourage yourself but Jeremiah might be like that weeping prophet. Jeremiah said it's just like fire. The way he hit, he had something in his bones. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. The way Jeremiah hit, he had to have some fire. See, some of y'all need to attack your problems like you got some fire. I know he stood on the other side of the ball and tell him to bring it on, but there was something about Jeremiah that David understand. He says, you're going to defy my God. And he's standing for him right there in Alabama. His foundations, he's standing up. Uh, had great conversation, great dialogue with him on last night. And, and we talked on the phone. And he loves the Lord. And I, I'm glad the Bible said, have, after you have done everything to stand, stand. Because if God be for you, who can be? And I want you to pray for Jeremiah. Honestly, those that know something about prayer, because the enemy don't like what he's doing. The enemy wants to attack everything that God has given him. But how many know we shall overcome it all? The Bible says no weapon formed against us. It didn't say the weapons would rise up, but he said they will not prevail. They won't prosper. So Jeremiah's in good company. He is of the Lord, and I love him and I could have did a lot of things. I started to do the little drum, drum, drum dramatic thing, like when Alabama come out the tunnel. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't never been to an Alabama game. The only person get upset when we go to the Alabama game is this one sitting right here. Amen. They be playing. They be, I see them coming out the tunnel. They be playing the music. Everybody in the state. He said, oh, here we go again. Amen. See, that's how, that's how, that's how victors ride come out. Amen. If you're an Auburn fan, we're praying for you. God bless you. Amen. And if you're, in a, if you're a Florida fan, you're just in the wrong state. Glory, glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says a merry heart dug good like a mess. And, and, and Zim Kniez came with his pajamas on, Alabama. You told me to tell him he's here with his pajamas on, Alabama. Amen. Amen. Don't look back. He's back there. Say it roll time, Kniez. You heard him. You heard him. He's in the building. He, he's in the building. But listen. Out of all of our joking and out of all of our football teams, we're all on the same team with God. And we're going to get behind Jeremiah. We're going to say, preach the word of God. Bless us, young people. I want you to listen. Because if you don't have discipline, it's going to be hard to achieve anything. Adults, if you don't have discipline, it's going to be hard for you to come out of what you're in. you got to get to the place where you understand you got to listen to wise counsel. I want everybody to stand to your feet. We ain't going to do Ram Obama just yet. But Zim, he's going to preach. And I love him. Let me tell you something. I, have, I haven't known him all of his professional life, but I've known him this part of his life. Met his wife and his mama, and it's just like we've been knowing each other all of, for many years. And mama, I told you I was going to, y'all look at mama right here. Y'all look at mama. How old are you, mama? 13 going on 12. There's some youthfulness in serving the Lord. Y'all ain't going to say amen. When you thought you was going the other way, God started bringing you some youthfulness back the other way. Thank you for that revelation, mama. She just preached already. Amen. But if without her, Jeremiah wouldn't be here. And I love him. I want everybody to give him a big 
big God bless you. Call his name and say, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. preach and we will hear you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Y'all have a seat. Amen. It is great to be here at True Word of Life. I've been blessed already. Have you been blessed? It is great to be here this morning and uh, to worship. Uh, we are just, Anthony, thank you again for allowing us to come and be with you this morning and to take God's word and to be a blessing this morning. To uh, We have the same goal every time God gives us opportunity to, to uh, proclaim his word and that is to uh, equip you, encourage you, and raise your level of expectation. Y'all got those three words? Equip, encourage, and raise your level of expectation. Um, we, we want you to leave here with a greater expectation of what God can do in your life and in your circumstances and situations. That's why you really should be excited. You should be excited because you're expecting God to do something on your behalf. Amen? That's for everybody in the room. Everybody everybody in the room should be in a place where everybody here, we all have something in common. That is, we have a future. And so we should be excited about our future in Christ. Amen? Amen. We, I, I uh, want to share with you, if you have an outline of the message today, hopefully everyone does, we uh, are just going to teach and preach and just look look at what God's word has to say. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. You can go to the Psalms 139. That's where we're going to be taking our text from and looking at and a couple other places. But uh, we want to encourage you today. And uh, we're living in a world where there's a lot of discouragement. But we could take the word of God, equip ourselves, and be encouraged. If you'll notice what's in the word encourage, and if you look on your sheet there, we have uh, the title of the message is Confidence and Courage for the Journey. When you started the day off today, you, were, you, were, you started on a journey. How I many every days you and I have been living You've had that many days on a journey, and we can actually break that down to hours and minutes, amen? But you have a journey. It's called life. Life is a journey. God has given you and I life, and it's a journey that we are on. And we all get to witness the journey of each other. That's how life works. So what we want to do today is just give you the word of God that can help equip you to enjoy the journey and to make the most of the journey. Amen? And that's what you want. That's really what you want. And so God put us here to affect each other. i say that again. God put you and me here to affect each other. That is, in our interaction along this journey, we're, we're, you can... You can actually look at another life, and you know what that life will help you with? That life will help you with confidence. That life will help you with courage. I played at the University of Alabama with a gentleman. He's the mayor of Little City where I grew up now, Phoenix City, Alabama. And he was the most disciplined person I'd ever been around. And he affected my life, and I share with him all the time that you help encourage me to become more disciplined. He already had a certain amount of discipline in his life that, by me gleaning from it, helped me become a better player. Helped me achieve some goals that I hadn't liked. So as we look at God's word today, we want to look at God's word and let it help equip you, help, let it help give you confidence and courage for the journey. have an athletic background like I have, it's 
to be successful, you have to have confidence. Athletics is about performing. Whatever the sport is, right now I think they got the British Open going on, right? Today's the last day. And whoever wins is going to have to perform. So what's involved? Pressure. You know, each and every day you get up, you and I get up, there's pressure involved. But God has given us a way to handle, to handle the pressure. Regardless of how many people you see not handling it, God has given us a way to handle it. So that you and I can get up every day and in the game called life, in the pressures, you learn how to handle it. Regardless of how many people, I'll say it again, regardless of how many people you see not handling it, he gave you life for you to handle it. And he has a way for us to handle it so that you walk in confidence. A confident person is a person that knows how to have victory. Gave you a definition for confidence. You look at it as it says faith or belief. Guess what you have to start with? Faith or faith and belief. You meet a person that has confidence, that person has faith. Belief. Where does that come from? Well, God has set it up in life. We've been witnessing it this morning. He said we have vacation Bible school this week. So in vacation Bible school, what's given is instructions. To the young people, all this week they've been given instructions from the word of God. Instructions by those that are older than them. Now look, look, listen to me. The reason some people don't have confidence in the game of life is because from the time they've been born, all they've been doing is rejecting instructions. Now let me share something with you. Yes. A physical property in our world called time. You and I, we are governed by it. You don't control that. You just are the beneficiary of it. I am too. Now what I'm saying with you is that, listen to me. Then if God, there's somebody in control of that, that governs that, that gives you that, He guess what? Then he is God. He's in control. So when you decide to reject the instructions, what you don't control is the consequences that come along with that. Hear what would you, the Spirit just shared. You don't control that. You can control the sin that you do, but you're not going to control the consequences of it. That's what we're sharing with you. So you can sit this morning and even not like the messenger, but what's most important is the message. You might not like I got this A on my shirt. You might sit there and say, I hate Alabama. I can't stand Alabama. Get beyond Alabama and hear what the Spirit is saying in his word. God's the reason I went to Alabama. So hello, guess what? That's where God used Alabama to help equip me. So get beyond the shirt, amen, and look at what the word says so that he can equip you. So I was sitting there thinking, praise God, bless these children. Because, see, God says instructions are to start the moment you, a person's born. Why so many people don't have confidence in life? They've been rejected from the moment they've been born. Prisons are full of them. What's wrong with the hard-headed? Disobedience. I want to talk to you about confidence. You don't accomplish anything great without confidence. So that's why it's vitally important that you teach our young people. So, how do you get this? God has a way already set up. See, when I played at 5'9", 155 pounds, if you go look at all of the accomplishments, what you have to come up with is, man, that guy was confident. Woo! Gracious, how'd you do that, boy? You had how many?
How many interceptions? You did what? How'd you come out of those games? And do confidence. Because there's a way to get it. And God wants you to have a natural confidence and a spiritual confidence. Now, you can meet people all day because of their giftings in the natural realm. They, got, they have confidence. They can run a corporation. They can run businesses. You can go to college and graduate. That don't mean you have spiritual confidence. See, those people, can, they can do all that. And you, he says, what does a prophet man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So you can have all of the natural confidence and not have spiritual confidence. And then you still die and go to hell. God says he wants you to have it all. Amen. That makes sense what I just shared. So it just doesn't do good for you. See, and so you can walk around, listen to me, you can walk around and you're confident in the natural abilities that you have, but you have no spiritual, you're not having an effect in the kingdom of God spiritually. You can't teach a Sunday school class. Mm. But you run a corporation. So what is God? God? So God has set it up that, but now how did that person get to that point to where they run a corporation? They had to have instructions that they received and they applied. That's how life works. So when we look at the word of God, that's what God, so in the spiritual realm, it works the same way. That which you're doing in the natural realm comes from the spiritual realm. Why don't we do it in the spiritual realm? Because that's the realm you can't see. But that's the realm that is of your essence and your nature, your spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Guess what? He says, let us make man in our image. So guess what you are? You're spirit. What's the problem? Most people are not in contact with him. Not allowing your spirit man to receive the instructions that it need to receive so that you'll walk in confidence in the spiritual area. Because it's the work that you do for the Lord that's going to last. Not what you do on the earth. But he'll take your natural abilities, hello, and use them for the kingdom. So if you don't have both of these areas of confidence working in your life, you're not whole. So we got a lot of people walking around not whole. And the, all of their confidence is in the natural abilities God's given them. Hear me, young people, hear me. So what does God do? He wants us to go to his word and let his word instruct us in the, in the true essence of who we are. Your spirit, your spirit will last forever. You're going to get a new body. But what gives life to the natural body right now is your spirit that's on the inside of you. And that's what's like God. So if you have your Bibles, it's Psalms 139. We're going to look at confidence and courage for the journey. Life is a journey. Learn to enjoy the journey. You have Psalms 139? Amen. Let's read along. It says, O Lord, you have searched me. And known me, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought of all, you comprehend my path, my lying down and my and are acquainted with all my ways. Hmm, how about that? Your good ones and your bad ways. Mm-hmm. Amen. God know them. Mm, for there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O oh Lord. You know it all together. You've hedged me behind and before. Laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall Hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. 
Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. Mm, isn't it somehow people do stuff in the dark? <laughs> it's, it's right here ought to help you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, amen. It was dark last night. Some folks decided they were going to do some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's revealed every day. Yeah, men, women doing stuff in the dark. And God reveals it. Give it time. Amen. Amen. Listen to what he goes on to say. I'm going to go on down to verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Look at verse 13 and 14. 14, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How many people truly feel that way about themselves? You know, from the moment that he says you were being formed in your mother. See, but what happens, the reason a lot of people, and a lot of you may have come here this morning, and you don't feel fearfully and wonderfully made because from the time you were born, somebody told you the opposite. How many parents told their children they were a mistake? How, hello, amen. How many fathers have cursed their children, have said negative things? How many of us get up on a daily basis and we're saying negative things to our children? Ungodly things. And right here, God says that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. See, the problem is that we don't understand what the God word says about us. So when you look at this Psalms 139, it gives us three reasons why we should be confident and have courage. Verses 1 through 6 I read to you. I'm reading 13 through 16. You know what, these, you, know what should, you should understand from these verses? God knows you because he made you. And he made you because he loves you. Now that's not in your notes. You can put that in there if you want to. Why did he make you? Why did he make you? What? Be because he what? You, you got to say that with confidence. You better say it with confidence. Because if you don't, somebody will come along and their opinion of you will steal it. You've got to get that in your spirit, man, deep down. That God loves me. That's the foundation. For which if you're going to do anything in life, you're going to walk in any type of confidence. You better know God loves you so that when people come along and say, you're not this, you're not that, you don't amount up to anything. You better have the love of God, which is the foundation. For God so loved you and me. He loved you. What? what? Why are you here? The love of God. Some of your faces look like you are so com you you are so confused. Oh Lord, what I'm doing here? Because He loves you. He gave you something called life. I don't care how many people you see blowing it, confused about it. We making it plain today. He made you because he loves you. And isn't it amazing how we'll let the circumstances steal that from us? Yeah. So how should you see love? I mean, you need to see love like you got a, a bag of diamonds. Where are you going to keep them at? In your bosom. Hello, amen. Amen, ladies. Where you going to keep them at? In your, where, where that is? Close to me. That's where you better, that's how you got to see the love of God. You better keep him close to your bosom. How come? Because God is love. How come? Because nothing can defeat God. Nothing can defeat love. If you can, if the enemy can bring up circumstances 
to separate you, to get your mind off of what we're saying right now, he got you. Now, I'm not saying you don't die and go to heaven. I'm saying you're just not a person in the game of life that's going to win. You know why you love you know why we love athletics? Because we get to see something carried out in the natural that's happening in the spiritual. Yeah, that's right. Auburn and Alabama gonna play this fall. Whoever you pulling for, guess what? You hoping your team win. Well, there, guess what? There's a bigger game called the game of life. Hello, amen. There's God and there's Satan. That's why you like athlete, you love athletics. You know it gotta be a winner. Who would want to watch something that ain't no winner? Well, guess what the word of God says? You and I win. When, when you, hello, amen. <laughs> you know what the worship time, they trying to get you to act like a winner today. Hello, amen. You know what a winner, hey, what the winners do? They clap, they jump up, they, you can tell the winning team, you can tell the losing team. Hello, amen. I got good news for you. You've, we've already won. We've already overcome. Hello, amen. Amen. So why are you acting like something you're not? Do you know in, 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 in nature things don't do that? Go talk to uh, a dog. He ain't trying to fly like a bird. He ain't saying, no, I'm a dog. Amen. Because that's his nature. I'm trying to get you connected with your nature. The true essence of who you are. You're made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26. Why are you walking around acting like something you ain't? You know, I got called a lot of names growing up in Phoenix City. I just didn't answer to them. That ain't my name. That ain't my nature. Who I know who I am. Hello, amen. And guess what it will give you? When you take these instructions, all we're doing is giving you the instructions. God's word is instructions. Turn real quick with me. Go over to, go over to Proverbs. Whew. Just turn over to the next book. One book over. You can, whew. Just start. Go to Proverbs 1. Look at, I, can it, we read to you. The Proverbs of Solomon. What do we know about him, the wisest to live? To know, look, look at verse 2, to know wisdom and instructions. What, how do you get confidence? How do you get confidence? The receiving and the application of instructions in the natural and in the spiritual. That's the way it works. You want your child, you want your son or daughter to be confident in the game of life? You instruct them in the word of God. You instruct them in the natural talents God's given. God's concerned about both areas. Don't leave one out. Because he uses those natural gifts and talents for the kingdom. You know, my wife and I did from, we got to, I got to the NFL in 1983. You know what I realized? This is an ability God given me. It's what I need to use for the kingdom. So that's what we did. We took the word of God and we shared it with people. Players on the team. Did that entire time I played. And I'm going to share the word of God with you. This is a platform. God gave me this ability to run and jump so that he may be glorified. You know what's sad? People take their abilities and talents and they glorify themselves. You know what happens? They crash and burn. We got 10,000 entertainers we, I could pull up one by one and show you. Oh, they're talented. Yeah, God gave them that. And they glorified themselves. We read in the paper, holy, how sad that is. To know what? Wisdom. And in what? Instructions. What's wisdom? Knowledge and application of God's word. Put the word in the children. What? Then wisdom, they'll have wisdom beyond their years. They'll know how to operate within the world. Then guess what God can do? He can raise them up. To know what? Wisdom and what? Instructions. What's the, when, do, let me, when do you stop following instructions? Oh, when you're grown? Well, what our young people need to see is the adults walking in wisdom and instructions. 
to receive, verse 3, the instructions of what? Wisdom. Hallelujah. Look at verse 5. A wise man will hear. Hear what? Instruction. And do what? Increase in learning. All the devil want to do is keep you dumb. Can I share again? I don't care how much earthly knowledge you have. You may have the knowledge to put people on the moon out in space, but guess what? If you don't have spirit, head again, spiritual instructions, all that whatever you know when you die, that's all it is to it. It's only spiritual legacy can go on eternally. Only spiritual legacy can go on eternally. A wise man will what? Hear. A wise woman will what? Hear and increase in learning. And a man of understanding will attain what? Wise counsel. Mm. Amen? Amen. So, confidence comes when you receive and apply instructions. So how, how, did I, how was I confident at the University of Alabama in football? Because when the coach gave the instructions, I received them and I applied them. So when I lined up at my position and I had a man bump call, I knew the instructions, I knew the fundamentals of it. Said, now if I do what Coach said, Coach Campbell said, or Coach Bill Oliver said, when, if I'll carry out what they taught me and what we practice, when they throw that ball, I got a chance to intercept it. And so I did that ten thousands of times. And I got results from it. We'll do the same thing with the word of God. You may have a situation where you have an enemy. Somebody's come against you. Go to the word of God. Find out what it says you do with your enemy. And then you do what? You carry out those instructions. And then you guess what you'll do? You'll get the results. You'll come out on top. God didn't create you to lose. I don't care how many people you hear talking loser. You know what I love about being at Alabama in 1979 and 80, 82? Was I was around, in football, I was around a champion. He wasn't going to accept losing. He wasn't accepting failure. And you know, what I, I, you know what God did? He said, now you just carry that over into your spiritual life. That's what you do. And then guess what? And then God can raise you up to be a light in, in, in this world. He'll, ra he'll raise you up to affect your fellow man. I'll say it again. He'll raise you up to affect your fellow man. So then guess what? He's no respecter of persons. You and I, listen to me, saints. You and I, guess what? You, God put that in your hands. He put that in each individual person's hands. How great do you want to be? Now, let, me, let me help you with that. The church doors was open this morning. Some people got here early to do the work. Some said, well, I'm going to just come and enjoy the whole deal. So some folks did more work than others. And Hello, amen. God's keeping record of every bit of it. You know, you want to sleep late, sleep in, just get here to enjoy the service and don't put no extra in. Hear what God say. I'll I, I let you do that. See, the problem, you need to understand, God's a gentleman. He said, because I made you in my image, I'm going to respect what you decide. I Y'all get this. I can't cross that. Y'all better get this. See, what that ought to tell you then is when you make a decision, the decision will turn around and make you. How'd you do that? I made a decision. Then what happens? There's the dynamic in the decision-making process that you and I is greater than us, but we get to benefit from it. Y'all hear that? I'm trying to give you some wisdom today. Folks, how'd you do it? How'd you come out? I made a decision. What am I doing? I'm going to follow God. I'm going to walk with him. Hello, amen. And then guess what happens? When you make that decision... Then he starts moving and working on your behalf. Mmm. Mmm. Then he starts giving you favor and honor and all these things that you, you don't, all you can do is be a recipient of it. Then you, we sitting back jealous of the people that's willing to, that's got this information and this knowledge, and we try to cut them down. We try to keep, 
you can, let me share something with you. You cannot cut off somebody else's blessings. Number one, you ain't a blessing maker. They come from God on high. Every good, hello, woman, let's come. So that's why you ought to stop praying for bad things to happen for people. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. You're not in control of that. Get in your place. Sharing with the pastor and I said, I have some people come against me. I said, my, I said, I pray for them. I bless them. Hey, I'm going to speak blessing. Hello, amen. Because ultimately, there's a God. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm, so let's turn back to Psalms real quick and we're going to finish here because you need to understand something. What is that, saints? Ultimately, you ain't running nothing. <laughs> you ain't running. You just, I can't believe we, you, we hear it all the time. You living on borrowed time. You better make the best of it. Let all these people that this listen to me that have decided to be a loser. That's their decision. You just decide you're not gonna be one. So it didn't matter how many people in Phoenix City didn't think I would go to Alabama. Man, they could have been praying seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Don't let him go. There. Don't let him. They don't have nothing to do. They didn't control that. Isn't it amazing what people are praying? Hope fear, hope fear, hope fear, hope fear. Hope lose, hope lose. <clears throat> Wasting your breath and your time. Need to be speaking blessings. Because what, what do you want? What do you want? Blessings. God to start with your enemy. Some stuff probably being held up that he got for you because you hadn't done that yet. Till you get that right, hello, amen. Till you get that right, hello, I said again. Till you get that right, and, and, and he's, hope, God, guess what God got his name? He said, hold it. Don't release none of that. Till they get, I see some repentance in this area. They still holding a grudge. <laughs> yeah. Somebody pulled out in traffic. And they let them know they was number one in their life. <laughs> this is where the rubber meets the road. Hello, amen. Yeah, every time somebody pull out, you get, you get mad as a hornet. Confidence. So how do you get confidence? Reception and application. Of instructions, period. So you know how, how I operate in athletic? Because I was quick to hear, slow to speak, and ready to do what the coach said. Had some players that was what? Slow to hear, quick to speak. Well, what well, my blessings? Coach don't want to play me. Oh man, I tell you what, he don't like me. No, he don't like you. Cause you run your mouth too much. Amen. I'm gonna close with. I want to just show you a verse that you need to f spend a few months on, maybe a few years. Psalms 139, verse 16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. So before God ever made you, he already had a vision of you. Your skin color, your ethnicity, your parent, uh -oh, your parents, whether you like them or not, whether you think they were good parents or not, hello, amen, the neighborhood you was going to grow up in, some of you are mad because you feel like you was on the other side of the track. Sort of, hello, amen. Hello, amen. Come on. Well, why my folks ain't have no money? Why my daddy didn't do this? Why my mom didn't? Why my daddy didn't raise me? Why my daddy leave my Hello. All of this stuff. But keep reading. We can look at something. And in your book, 
they all were written. Then look at the next verse. The days fashioned for me. Every day already written. Already. We have to live them out. God's already. He inhabits the eternity. He knows what he's allowing in this day in your life. Don't miss this. When as yet there were none of them. And let me read that again. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How many of you got up today? And thank God for today. And everything that can come in the day, he says, guess what? I've already ordained it. I've already written it. So guess what? In all things, give thanks. And that's a process of learning. That's a process of applying those instructions. Hello, amen. Until you leave this earth, you and I will be in the process, in the process of receiving and applying instructions that is the word of God in our lives. When we do, you and I will be men and women that walk with confidence and courage in this journey. And we're going to affect lives for the good. God knows you because he made you. He made you because he loves you. That's the second reason. God is always with you. God is always what? With you. God is always what? With us. He's always with us. Verse 17. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. God is always thinking about you. What? God is always thinking about you. Three reasons I've given you this morning. To walk with confidence and courage in the journey of life. How to walk, confidence and courage. Confess the word of God. Claim the promises of God. So we got 10 confessions down it. Confessions that what? You being in Christ. Look at these confessions. Can we say them together? Number one, what does it say? I am called in Christ. What's number two? I'm a joint heir in Christ. So that's why the pastor was saying here a moment ago when the lady said, well, Jesus was back. No, nope, that ain't true. And what, that's what you need to know too. You're an heir. So what do you need? What do you need? What do you? An airship is about receiving something. You didn't work for it. You got it because you're in the family. What puts you and I in the family? The blood. All the benefits. What's the problem? We don't believe it. Therefore, we can't receive it. You can only receive you got you, until you start believing it and confessing it. That's why we got it right here. I'm an heir. That's why you don't walk around saying what you can't afford. I'll say it again. You got to stop saying, well, we can't afford this. We can't afford. No. You know who say that? People that don't know they're an heir. How much does it cost to make a human being? How much does it cost for you to live on a daily basis, for you to draw in 
oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The magnificence of, your, of life. Of breath. See, the problem is we walk around and we have no clue because we won't stop and take the time to let God just dumb. Had it to the slaughter. God sitting there saying, I made something magnificent. And look at it. No value for life. No value for who you're being a son or a daughter of the most high God. So we act in a kind of way. Lower ourselves to living in a place he never intended. It doesn't have anything to do with your zip code. When you're a king or a queen, when you're a royalty, it has nothing to do with your zip code. You got a future zip code. Hello, amen. All that old broke thinking. What I mean by that? Let me tell you what I mean by broke thinking. When you have a circumstance or situation like loving your enemy, you better, you better realize you're rich. I got enough love in me to love my enemy because I'm a rich person. Amen. Hello, amen. If you had 50, let me put it in that. If you had 15, 20, 30, 40 million dollars, you don't, you don't know when a pen is missed. When you can't find a pen, you lose a, a two, 10 cents or a dollar. Uh, it, you got so much. I love the line in the movie, Hidden Figures. You watch that movie. I just, this line has been in me for, boy, I'm telling you. I, Kevin Cosner says to all those mathematicians in the room, he come in, he say, we got to start seeing beyond what we can see. God needs some people, some saints, that will start seeing beyond what you can see. I'm sanctified in Christ. I triumph in Christ. Number five, I have what? Liberty. Were you free to worship this morning in demonstration? What's wrong with them? Why are they acting like that? They don't take all that. Well, you better go read Revelation, find out what they're doing up there. Because there's some beings more powerful than you. I think they I think they letting it, they letting it rip up there. Hello, amen. What you gonna do when you get there? Huh? Hello, amen. I know what the deal is. Some of you don't plan on going. Because guess what? Who the son is set free. You're free to do what? If you worship him. Where? On this side. Amen. How about number six? When the last time you confessed that one? Where? When? When you're drowning. When it's at its worst. When it's like the enemy got his foot on your neck. That's when you confess that one. I can tell you what's wrong. Most people don't know how to do that. We losing now. Well, you know what I'm going to say? We're going to win the game. When, when do you say this one? I reign well in life. What life? This one. When? When it's at its worst, it can get, can you open your mouth? Why ain't some situation changed for you? Because you're not a Proverbs 18, 20, and 21 man or woman. A man belly is filled by the fruit of his mouth. And he come and it, and it gives him increase. 
Why are these confessions in here today? Because you got to open your mouth and you got to say them. Because if you are a Christian, then the, what, we, what we call Christianity is called the great confession. You got in the kingdom by opening your mouth. The blood is applied by you opening your mouth. Proverbs 18, 20. So death and what? Life is in the power of the. Well, why do you think that's in there? I'm a new creature in Christ, number seven. Number eight, I am what? Risen with Christ. Number nine, I re what? Rejoice. When the last time you rejoiced? When the last time you rejoiced? You know why you ought to rejoice every day? Because he rejoices over you just having that knowledge. God rejoices over you. Number 10. I am what? Complete. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. In Christ. You're what? You're whole. I don't care how many people have told you. You're incomplete. Jesus. God the Father through Jesus Christ sees you complete. Whole. Nothing broken. I, see this blood. He sees you perfect. It ain't your work. It's Jesus' work. It all, that's, all these are what is in Christ. Confessions of being in Christ. When are you going to come to that revelation? When you do, you stop letting your circumstances dominate. And you'll walk with confidence and courage. Well, let, me, let me help you one. If your money low, he said, let the poor say there. When the last time you said that? When the last time you said, I'm rich. We rich, honey. We got all the money. We got all the money we need. Our money in circulation. We just graduated our last daughter from the University of Alabama. Six children went through the University of Alabama. What you do? You're in the ministry. Man, you can't make it in. He owns it all. You may feel like you don't have any strength. He said, let the weak say there. What's the problem? You're not confessing the word of God. And therefore, you're not affecting the atmosphere that's in the spirit realm in which a, that creates the circumstances. So if you're sick, guess what you need to be saying? I'm healed. Oh, you don't say that. Don't say it. I'm healed. In Jesus, I'm healed. Regardless of the doctor's report. How many places we got to go in God's word? He shows you he's a healer. Yet we know these instructions are in the word of God, and we fail to do them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What do our young people need? Confidence and courage for the journey. Eyes are closed, heads are bowed. You thir you, eyes closed, heads bowed. If you're 13 years or younger, I want y'all to come up here to the front. Come on.
on up, all young folks. You, thir- you, under- you 13 years and under, come on up. We're going to pray for you. Come on. Come on, we're going to pray for you. And all you adults that know how to pray, I want you to come up and you lay hands. You find somebody, one, two, three, four, you can lay hands on. We're going to pray for our children. Hello, amen. 13 years and under, come on, we're going to pray for you. Yes, and, and if you, you got, you're walking in the anointing, come on up, put your hands on them. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, adults. We need to, we need to pray for our children. We're going to pray right here. Amen. We're going to close this with prayer. Come on down, children. Come on. We're going to pray for our children. Thirteen years and under. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to ask God to release a spirit of confidence and courage in our young people, in our children. And he's going to raise up some Aaron's. He's going to raise up some Moses. He's going to raise up some Joshua's. He's going to raise up some Daniel's. He's going to raise up some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's going to raise up. Hello, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Some of you adults, won't y'all come on up here and put your hands on these children. Come on, put your hands on them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to pray for their days to come. We're going to pray for the days that's to come. We're going to pray for the days that's to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Those days that God has already written and ordained us in the word. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for them that God would give them a strength. God would give them vision. God would give them wisdom. God would give them a strength and a vision and a wisdom. Hallelujah. They would get revelation. Hallelujah. On who they are, whose they are, who they belong to, where they come from. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. This is a day you have made. We're going to rejoice in it and be glad. Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for those that are here today. We bless them in Jesus' name. We speak prosperity over our children today. We speak favor over our children today. We speak honor over our children today. Hallelujah. We bless them by the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, may they be quick to hear, slow to speak, to know who they are in Jesus Christ, that you are the creator, sustainer, ruler, redeemer in their life. As Jacob did, as Moses did, when they blessed the children of Israel, we bless them today. We bless them. We call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We call on you today. Bless our children today, O God. Bless our children today, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we come to you. We cry out to you. No other help we know. You withdraw your hand from us. Where will we go? We speak revelation. Dreams and visions over our children. Raise them up to be powerful men and women in the earth. To walk with you. To honor you with their lives. To walk in your word. To believe you. To trust you. All the days of their lives. We bless them today in Jesus' name. And all God's saints said, amen. Amen. Pastor Anthony, thank you, brother. Listen, a powerful word. And it's so eye-opening that even at the end of his sermon, in saving our kids, you can't be political. In saving our children, you can't be political. You got to be righteous. The Bible said, train up a child in the way that he should go. Don't wait until our young people are shot and you want to get on TV and say we need to adopt a child. You should have already been doing your job already. Don't take the downfall as a springboard to show yourself. Show God. 
And if you're broken, he can put you back together again. He's a God that specializes. We are winners. Don't let nobody fool you. We are winners. You heard how tall he was, how much he weighed, but yet he served a greater God. He was like David. Goliath said, where this little lad coming from? I come in the name of Jesus. If you choose to defy my God, I wish I had a reader in here. If you choose to defy my God, the God I serve, touch your neighbor, say he's well able. If your child is gone astray, my God is well. Tell somebody we serve an able God. And Jeremiah, as you continue to stand in Alabama, as God continues to use you to break down strongholds, and when they begin to inquire of you, who are you? I am that I am that who sent me. I come to stand in the name of Jesus. At Alabama. With a great team, with a great coach. But yet he has a heart for the players. The students. In Bible study. Impacting lives. It's not about his personal accomplishment, but it's about winning more for Christ. Kids come to school really having identified with God, and for the first time they lay their eyes on a Jeremiah, somebody's going to introduce them to the king of kings. Come to, come to school already got children already, but they come to play football, but they're about to be introduced to somebody that can change their life. He's not here by accident. And guess what? When you're a winner, you're not afraid to meet great people like Jeremiah. That's not the Bible says he'd bring you before great men. I wish I had a Bible reader in here. You can't be afraid to say, for God I live. He thought enough of you, Kendall. Let's go. As this soul minister to you, I want you to listen to this. You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Let me tell you what he did. Me. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was worth saving.
at the young folks in here. Grace Mama said, I'll give you another chance. Today is that chance. If you don't know him, I was 13 going on 12. But when I first told my grandchildren that, oh, by the way, I'm Miss Castile. I'm dreading my mother. So I heard him talking about going to Alabama. When he went to Alabama, I was drinking. But he saved me. Not to lose Anna and I was thinking about this in a lot of time. When we went out to lose him one time, I was drinking. He was heading to his aunt. And he, my husband told him, said, Leave her there, leave her there. She's been drinking, she's been drinking. So he had my bag down and left me. But from then on, he, when he go down that road to his aunt's house in Louisiana, I'd be the back seat rider or the front seat rider. He'd be driving me days or whatever. That's what God, that's what God did, and that's what God can do. Now, I dance a lot, but you know what I dance for? I thank God that I still can dance. I danced when I was drinking, I lost my shoes. But now I know where my shoes at. Back then, I didn't know what it was. I lost more shoes than the law lie. I danced for my pastor when his birthday, I sang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I know you all of that mean God bless you. Now, Sunday, coming Sunday, he'll be celebrating 44 years. I'm going to sing, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's what I'm going to sing, Sunday. But I just want to bring out about this drinking thing. I used to drink. But thank God he saved me 32 years ago. I haven't had any since 32 years. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing in this world. When Jeremiah was talking about an enemy, enemy, I had a son get killed up in Bessie in prison. If I had been drinking, he'd have been bad. He'd have been bad. Because that man called Jeremiah house, had my mother there, and he said, what you want to do with him? First I had him, Jeremiah had him come to me. Jeremiah was upset about it. I said, Jeremiah, I said, your brother gone on. I said, what the lady, the boy mother, is got this, he the one that, got a son and lady, and they think he's the one I'm married. So that way I felt back, because that wasn't going to bring my son back. So when the man called up there, he said, what y'all want me to do with him? I said, don't do anything with him. I said, because that's not going to bring my son back. He said, what kind of people are you all? He said, the parole man or whoever was down there in that over in Bethany, Alabama. So some of y'all might be in here and have hate and things. Something that happened to you all. But I had to leave that to God what I had to do. Because at that time being, I wasn't drinking when that happened, but it could if I had been drinking, I'd probably been dead. Because I probably would have tried to drink myself to death over that situation. You know, so I, 
I didn't get up here and said it, but see, by me being down here in Montgomery, I know some people down here, and I used to babysit a family down here somewhere in Montgomery now, but I babysit for them. His last name is Timmer Simon. He had Simon the Hunter. I might know him. I don't know. But I was a good babysitter, and I loved that family, and they still loved me too. But I was sober when I, when I babysit for them. I, I started babysitting after I got, started drinking. And I raised my six grandchildren. With them, everything they had been sick and talking about. Then they got a crazy grandma. But I haven't been drinking, but I'm still drunk, drunk on, on God, drunk on God, drunk on God. You know, when I said that, because I could say some crazy stuff. I had this what you call laughing yesterday at me. But some crazy stuff I told them. I'm going to tell them I'm going to get out of another county. Here in my plan, Alabama, I don't know if you know it or not. I don't know if your wife knows it. And I went to this lady's house. I called her first. I said, can I come down and look at TV? My son playing football. She didn't know I had a football player. She said, yes, yeah, because she was going back there to get me a drink in the kitchen. So we brought Jerry and I up on the screen. They said, hi, Mama, we number one. She said, Mary, you see your son say, hi, we number one. I said, I thought that was a white boy. I get that drink, I ain't even know my own child. So thank you, Pastor Lee. Appreciate it. Y'all give it up for mom, amen. Let me tell you something. If you talk to her, if you down, she'll bring you out the dumps. And that's something good about her. I heard Jeremiah tell the testimony, but it ain't nothing like the one that been blessed to tell the testimony. You know, can't nobody tell it like the one that God has done it for in their life. If you're drunk, you want to get drunk, get drunk off the Holy Ghost. It'll get you high, but you still be in your good senses. Amen. No man can turn, serve two messes. <laughs> Y'all get up for mama. We love her so much. Amen. Come on, Auburn. Help Alabama down. Auburn. Auburn. You're moving kind of slow, Auburn. Oh, you went inside down, Auburn. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're through. Listen, if you're in this room and you have not been introduced to Jesus, who Jeremiah was speaking of, so many times we feel like we can do it by ourselves, but all of us need help. We can't do nothing. When I'm trying to get myself together, it took God to get mama together. God did something in her son's life. Bless mama. Everybody said, I wish I was you, but you don't see what I go through. You see all of this, you see all of that, and you see us doing this, but you never know the sacrifice. God looked and he saw you today, but you didn't see the sacrifice. The sacrifice of him hanging on Calvary's cross for my sins, for your sins. Stop holding grudges because it only hinders you from your promise. I don't want anything to hinder me from my promise. Free yourself. Somebody else can hold on to it, but you free yourself and release your breakthrough. If you're in this room and you want to receive Christ in your life, you don't have to join this church, but if you want to receive Christ, wherever you are, you can lift your hands and say, I want that relationship with him. Stand to your feet. Is there anybody I want to receive? Look at what God got. One is oneness, but two is a witness. That may be some of you that have received Christ, but you've been out of the ark of safety. You don't have to come to true word. There are a lot of other ministers and churches in here, even in Montgomery. But if you want to rededicate your life, don't allow this moment to pass because God declared you a winner. If that's someone is you, lift your hands and just say, I want to rededicate my life. Come now, my brothers.
got this figured out. Watching us because you made a way. When my back was against the wall. I'm wrong. That's your song. Listen. From Montgomery, have you ever confessed Christ before? What moved you today? Have you ever have been a member of a church anywhere? God already mentioned bathroom and you and we're outside. only you thought church was born you was looking Jeremiah has three or four camps and I told Jeremiah I'm making sure that I get a group of young men at our expense we're going to make sure they're in Jeremiah's character camp I believe in what he's doing. He believes in me and I believe in him. Y'all ain't going to say that. Believers have to start believing in one another. And guess what? I met him over at Apostles. Lift your hand, Apostle. She came. Elder in here. This is what God wants to do. God wants you to take this moment, not just as an experience that makes me feel good, but as an experience that would change my life, that would propel me into my winning attitude. Say with me, I'm a winner. Say, I confess that I'm a winner. Through Jesus, I'm a winner. We're going to get more information from you. God bless you. Y'all come on, clap your hand for these brethren. He said something about atmosphere. Can I tell you something? When you go back to your church, ask God to change your atmosphere. Can I tell you something? I put out a survey on our Facebook page, and a lot of them missed it. See, God is so smart. And one of my, one of my things, I said, what do you think the church needs? I had one of them was more excitement. So more people said more excitement. So I looked at it and said, huh. If they said more excitement, they ought to say, God, give me the excitement. Y'all quiet in the room. Excitement won't come if you don't create the excitement. We're looking for somebody else to excite us when you ought to look at what God has done and be excited in yourself. Now they're going to stop asking my question because they think I'm setting them up. I take it up with God. Amen. I love you, fellas. One more thing. What football team, college football team do you like? Wall Eagle. Wait a minute. You paid that man, didn't you? Wait a minute. Do you know this man? I knew it was something. Yeah, I see. You, you, yeah. You said that all these Crimson Tide were going to be in here. How much you paid the man? Yeah, you did. You paid him something. I'm going to tell your wife on you. Amen. We're going to fix that. Who you? Who you for? Roll Tide. Fifth or fifth. Because in the state, we're brothers. And, and, and the uh, chaplain at Alabama... I mean, at Auburn, Chip, right? Chat, we're going to get with him. He's going to come and bless. And they work together very well. This is a blessed man. His wife is blessed, very intelligent. Mom is blessed. I enjoyed them last night. All of us had a conversation going on. Everybody, it was three on three. Everybody had that conversation. I find out she knows some of the same folks I know. Anitra's mama, we called her on the phone. She talked to Anitra's mama that married my baby brother. So she and we know the same people. Amen. So we love her. All the way from Phoenix City. Columbus, Phoenix City. Somewhere like that. Both of them. Amen. They're right there at each other. Same time zone. Tuskegee, Mohouse. Yeah, the game. Yeah. God bless you. Watch this.